Okay, so today we're down in the garage and we're going to be filming all of our equipment so we can get a record of it and good for insurance, but in case anyone wants to see what we have for production capability. I'm going to shoot this whole thing on my iPhone 10 and no big quality, but just to get it captured. So we have the office in Daytona upstairs we got to still do and the office in Tampa we still have to do. But we're going to capture this gear here today. <coughs> so you can see in the Vanguard cases, we've got the travel camera gear, studio cameras and monitors, sound, sound mixing, video mixing, commando cloths. We've got turntables, green screen and white screen, travel lights and tripods, DASNY lights, We've got our um, teleprompter, and we've got a big gimbal, a medium gimbal, and an iPhone gimbal. We've got a, a drone with all of its accessories. We've got our video camera and iPhone 11 Pro in here. Uh, we've got some more desktop gear in there that you'll see. We'll go through our um, projector. Here we got our spotters, and that's our big pop spot lighting kit. So I'm going to use this camera with this little iPhone tripod. Just for the record, we have our, our uh, portable table. Starting out on the short end here, we've got our weight bag. We've got two bags of just miscellaneous camera gear with a, uh, a, an iPad mount. We've got our newer light screens. Got two Manfrotto desk mounts, another little tripod I use for lights typically. We've got two PSA uh, studio arms for recording there. We've got two we've got two light domes they go with the pop spots. We've got two newer uh, backdrop stands. So they're 12 feet wide plus. Uh, we've got two bags here that we keep our, uh, our boom lighting or sound systems in, which I'll show you that. We've got our two Manfrotto camera tripods, which are pretty specialized. We've got a bag of sound tripods and a, bound for, a bag for light tripods. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna open everything up one at a time. And then I'll get to the desks upstairs and in Tampa later with the, uh, with the new vlogging desk setup I'm going to do. So I showed you the whole high level of what everything is. Now i got to go through the bags. Um, not really going to be a fancy deal to tell you uh, how to use everything because all I want to do is really just capture it all for my insurance company. So I'm going to start off with the travel camera gear bag. I'm going to open that up and show you what I got in it. So. Vanguard uh, medium sized bag and my cameras are A, B and C just because of the way I use them. So I've got a Canon M50 uh, mirrorless camera. You see it's marked C, that's my C camera. Um, for lenses I've got a Sigma 16 millimeter prime lens. I've got a Canon 15 to 45 uh, variable lens. I've got a Canon 11 to 22 zoom lens. I've got a Canon 22 millimeter prime lens. I've got a Canon 55 to 200 millimeter zoom lens. And then I've got the big Canon uh, 75 to 300. Now this is an EF series lens so I also have to have the Canon mount adapter for EF to EOS M which this camera and series is. So I have that adjust that adapter. I've got a Vivitar monopod, which is great for just stabilizing a camera and being light and easy to go. Remember, this is my, my Go Travel bag. I have a 16 millimeter hood, or I'm sorry, it's a 50, I forget, it goes to my 16 millimeter, but it's actually 67 millimeters, so that goes on here. And I had my camera mounted on a high tripod and it fell over and broke. So I got to tell you, that can be a lifesaver. Uh, with that, I've got 
a 57 or 55 49 millimeter hood and here's the uh, the one for the camera the Sigma that broke but it's still got one good side that I can use uh, in here I also have a hero 3 GoPro with a dive case and I've got a hero go through uh, hero 3 for the LCD case so I can actually see the back when I'm using it and then in here I got a whole bunch of different mounts and batteries and stuff that go along with it now I've got a Tac Star SGC 598 shotgun microphone with little uh, noise filter on it. It works really great. It runs uh, extra power. The the Gobi Joby Gorilla Grip um, Gorilla Pod so that you can run and gun. You can wrap this around things. It's great uh, multi-purpose. This is just one travel case, right? So then in here. I also have my Vivitar uh, 35 to 500 telephoto lens, and since that's a Vivitar mount, you got to have a Vivitar T2 to EOS M mount adapter to use it on the camera. So, fun lens, you can see quite a ways away with that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, because this camera is battery operated, uh, if you want to use it for an extended period of time, you have to have one of these little adapters that replaces the battery with uh, this little charging pack so that it can run on AC power. And that is really convenient. So you don't have to do it a lot. You also have to have a battery charger and always a spare battery. And nothing like a hot shoe little flash just to have. I keep a pick and a little spare multi-tip screwdriver, always super handy. And then I've got about eight Vivitar filters for the different sizes. Some are UV, some are uh, ND, and then others are color filters. In here I also have a hard case that, that has all of my uh, SD cards. So I got five 64 gigabyte uh, Ultra Plus or Extreme Pro SD cards. And then I've got six um, 64 gigabyte micro SD cards. Use them. When you're traveling or going anywhere, you have to make sure you have these. So I have the Uni uh, SD card reader for both standard and micro. It goes to a USB-C and then also for a USB drive. So keep those handy. You'll want them. Then I have a spare cables, a dust bulb, lens cleaner, spare SD cards, there's probably what five in there, flashlight, um, other power accessories, adapters, things like that. Always good to have. You'll always seem to need some of that. And that is everything that's in my travel camera gear bag. So that was my travel camera gear bag. Next, we're going to take a look at my studio gear bag. And this is because I like to have a couple of different setups. I've got a travel gear that whenever I'm traveling, I can take it out with me. But this is really more for setup in a studio uh, for a multi-camera type setting. So again, uh, I'm using the same systems, the Canon M50 mirrorless camera. You can see this one's marked camera A. And I've got it in a small rig gear, uh, small rig camera cage with an accessory mount. And I also have a Manfrotto quick release on it because I use Manfrotto quick releases on everything. And then I've got a uh, another Canon M50 uh, mirrorless camera. This one is Mark B, so you can see I've got my A, B, and C camera. In and the other camera, I also have another uh, small rig cage for that, which is great for mounting gear. For these two cameras, I've got Canon uh, 15 by 45 lenses, one for each camera. If I need to do something different, I'll go to the others. Cables, you'll find <coughs> jillions of cables. Um, I also keep uh, the Viltrox VL162T light. I have two of them. They're small LED lights that uh, these will adjust up and down from 
think about 3,500 Kelvin up to uh, 8,500 Kelvin. So you can and dim from 20 to 100 percent. So great light with those. Um, they come with, again, different uh, filter plates. So you've got your multiple colors you can use with it. Uh, with that, you have to have a charging cord. So I've got a, the, the power. I'll, everything I do here, you're going to see I run on either battery or electric. So I can either run it continuously on electric power. I can pack up the whole kit and caboodle. I can do everything with no power whatsoever. So that's kind of the way I designed all of my kit to work. So I have power cords for the lights with uh, extension cords. Might as well have them when you'll need them. Um, for the cameras, as I showed you on my other one, those have um, set up for the power adapters. So I've got the power adapters with extension cords on both of those. I also have all the batteries uh, for the Viltrox lights. I've got dual batteries and chargers for the Canon cameras. And then also uh, Viltrox battery chargers. And just to have a spare, I've got a BM dual bay USB digital charger with two spare cameras for the batteries. I mean for the cameras. Uh, again, screwdriver with multiple tips, very handy. And more power cables. They actually run USB for powering the uh, cameras. So those are big USB extensions. To go with the cameras, because when you're recording, and you flip out the back screen, you only have this much little view to look at. And depending on where you're at in the room or, or what you're doing, it's challenging to see. So I have Field World monitors for both of these two cameras. And pretty pretty good system set up. So it's a seven inch monitor, and it's got a a little hood that folds out. But you can see it's a it's a great monitor. It mounts on these accessory mounts, so I can actually put it aiming any which way I want, and I'm able to see exactly what the camera is able to see. And again, following the same uh, battery and, and electric mindset, I've got the the electric power, the battery, battery charger, and again the extra cables for connecting it to the cameras. And you'll find if you'll get a coiled cable, it works much simpler than straight cables because you can really bungee it up out of the way. So I have two of these. I'm not going to get it all the way out. But again, two of the Field World 7-inch monitors for monitoring the or being able to see the cameras. So that is my studio camera gear and some extra lights and monitors. So we've covered the, uh, the travel camera gear bag and the studio camera gear bag. Now we're going to start with our sound. So I've got two bags. And the first one, it's easy to tell. I keep everything marked on the outside sound, so I know which bag I'm looking at. Everything again in these Vanguard cases, they're super, they're uh, super strong, well padded, they're just good gear cases. So let's start off. Fastcam TH03, um, these are closed back studio monitoring headphones, pretty well. And then for my boom microphones that I extend out while I'm in the studio, these, of course, with extra mounts, are Rode NTG2s. So they're a fantastic uh, microphone, very directional. If you can point it right at someone's mouth, you'll pick it up. And anything to the sides, it really just lets it go. So that's a great microphone. Again, I have two of those. Uh, most of my studio gear is set up so I can have, like, interview uh, two people you know, one interviewing the other at a time. Or if I'm doing a podcast, I've got enough for four people to do a simultaneous podcast. So again, uh, another NTG2 Rode microphone. Those are great. Uh, also for the studio, the Tascam. It's a linear PCM recorder, DR60D Mark II. This is a fantastic little unit. Um, it's got your SLR cable inputs. And you can control all of your inputs, your gains uh, and peaks and everything right through here. So it's a fantastic unit. 
It's battery or power operated. Um, it's great for recording. I put a, uh, a Manfrotto quick release on the bottom so I can put it on the top of something. Uh, and then I've got another Manfrotto quick release on the top of it so I can actually stack a camera or a monitor or anything I want instead of having a separate mount just for that. Um, for these two roads, if I'm ever doing anything outdoors, I've got two cat head filters for them. It's great, blocks out the noise. Uh, the Movo microphone, I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Uh, also in here, I keep the Fanta Seal, which is a, a, uh, just a four-point uh, articulating headset so that you can mount some of these things to a stand on the side and be able to work with it. Uh, one of the things that I'm, that I'm using right now that you can't see it, so I'm going to get into my lavalier microphones if I can get this out of my pocket. <laughs> so I got a Knox Gear lav lavalier microphone, which is what I'm wearing right now. It's going onto my shirt. And the, the Knox Gear is great because it's a powered microphone, um, which a lot of them aren't. So it doesn't need any outside uh, power from something. But I'm using the Rode Wireless Go, so there's this receiver or transmitter on, on my end, and then hooked to my camera is the Rode Wireless Go uh, receiver. So right now, this lavalier, likes pick, lavalier mic is picking up my voice, and the Rode, uh, Rode Wireless Go transmitter system is sending it to my iPhone. So that's how that works. So I don't have to show you those two cases because it's all right here in my pocket. I'll put it all away. Pretty cool system, huh? And with the road gear, actually this has its own microphone on it, so you don't even need to use a lav mic on it if you don't want to. But great lav mic. Then in here, again, just because there's different, some lav mics work different in different environments and they give you a different sound quality. So here's an IC uh, L1 lavalier microphone. Big clip head, long cord, so really great for uh, you know, hiding somewhere on a person. <coughs> Sometimes you'll hide it on the back, come up, go through the hair if they're really, really big. Um, here's my Deity lav mic, which I think is really the best sound quality of all. And it's, uh, it comes with a you know, couple of different cat heads for it, uh, foam uh, wind blocks, a little thing of tape, which, you know, <laughs> you have to tape it in. Sometimes you'll tape it in inside your clothes, but um, that is a really great sounding, most natural sounding lav mic. So that's really one of my, my favorite one right there. Uh, I get a mix of different mounts for uh, gear to go on the table. And then here's what I'll show you my last uh, lav mic setup. Is I've got a, ta a Tascam lav, lav mic. It's not super great quality, but it works pretty well. And I've got the Tascam DR-10L recorder. So right now, as I'm speaking, it's going onto this microphone through the Rode Wireless Go system and recording with that. But if I want to use a separate system, uh, I can play this lav mic and use this Tascam recorder, and it will record it. And then what I do is I sync up the audio captured in this with the video at, when I'm in post, post-production. And then I also have the Tascam DR10X recorder, which connects to this microphone. Um, just like that. So now I've got a microphone if I want to use that and it's being recorded right here. Again, you have to match it up in post. So not too difficult, but it's something you do. Um, with sound gear, you need lots of uh, SLR cables um, for the best quality sound, uh, HDMI and USB cables, of course. And then on something I'm going to show you later, when I set up a tripod with a mic boom on it, so that boom extends way out, and it's over top of your subject, so that it's holding the microphone, like, pointed right at their mouth, you've got to have a boom arm adapter for that. So I've got two of these, which this goes on your, on your boom stand, and then this mounts so that the mount goes through this and extends out. So best way to connect that. So, I've got, again, I've got two of those for mounting to that boom arms, and like I said, you're always going to have just tons of cables. So that is my studio recording, uh, sound recording gear. Okay, so that was a look at my sound recording equipment. Now, 
we're going to take a look at the sound mixing. Again, all my bags are marked sound mixing. It makes it simple. Again, Vanguard bags. If you're leaving everything set up, you've got a permanent space for it. You don't need to be so portable. You don't need the bags, but I do. Um, again, tons of SLR cables. There's need a lot. These are uh, in-house covers for the uh, Shure microphones. So in here, we have a Shure SM7B microphone, which you see that's in my offices as well. I use that. Uh, great uh, cartoid microphone, directional, uh, great sound quality. Uh, are you sure? Uh, SRH840. These are actually closed closed back studio monitoring headphones so you can get great sound quality you can hear what you're processing and we actually have two pair of those uh, again they come with lots of cables and spare pads so we have two pair of headphones uh, of course you need lots of USB-C equipment <laughs> and then for the, the road gear, which we're getting to, uh, more SLR cables. It's good to use Ziploc bags to control your cables because you'll get so many, they're a mess. You can put them in Ziploc bags and, and label them. Uh, power unit for my real sound mixing stuff. Padding. And here we have our sound system, which is the Rodecaster Pro uh, mixing four channels. You can see there's four SLR channels. Uh, we've got all our channel inputs through here. Uh, we can have additionally external inputs. We can have uh, iPhones. So, for example, somebody can call in and we can have them speaking with the group of four. We can control their levels, presets. Great system. So that is our sound processing actually when we're recording in the studio. So that was for our sound recording and processing, which is great, recording up to four people. Really the setup is for uh, doing like four person podcasts or uh, video conferencing as well. So can't do the sound portion without the video portion. So another bag, Vanguard bag, and really excited to try this one. I really haven't gotten a chance to work with it much yet. It's the uh, ATEM Mini Pro. And the first one I got had a power problem that uh, you could hear the fan buzzing and I could hear it over top of everything else. But pretty simple. It's, a, it's relatively small, ATEM Mini Pro. It handles four HDMI video inputs. Uh, you can switch back and forth between either four during recording, so you don't have to do it in post. You can do it live. Um, picture in picture, screen over screen, it's just a phenomenal tool. You can do so much with it. And really looking forward to starting to tweak that and get good with it. However, uh, you'll see in one of our cameras, I use HDMI micro to HDMI output for the Canon M50 cameras. So I can use those as a video source. But when I get to the Canon XA45, you're going to see that that is using SDI cable, which uh, HDMI cable, you can go to about 15 feet of good transmission. And SDI cable, you can go unlimited distance. <coughs> Excuse me. So. What you need with that is the uh, Blackmagic Design Micro Converter Bidirectional, so you can use SDI, SDI to HDMI to run the SDI cables into the HDMI input there. Blah, 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 right? So it's a, <laughs> a lot of that. But anyway, so that's the Blackmagic Design uh, ATEM Mini Pro. Tons of cables. You've got to have uh, SDI cables if you want to be able to do what I want to do with longer distance, like you know, recording from different angles of a, of a, of a stage, for example. Um, lots of just cable adapters that you're going to need for going from SDI, SDI to HDMI, HDMI to HDMI micros or USBs. Um, you know, like I've got 10 different cables and adapters here. So this is the, the video switching system. So if you think about it with the H the ATEM Mini Pro set up for switching four video cameras and external inputs like a, like a phone or computer, things like that. Um, and then you've also got the Rodecaster Pro, which will handle four microphones plus the phones and the additional external computer, etc. So really, uh, the, the capability to podcast with four people or to do a four-person conference 
live in a room um, and capture the whole thing recorded. Uh, pretty fun. So that's, that's the video recording component. So the next thing I'm going to show you is just backdrops because right now you can see my backdrop here is the garage door or the wall which doesn't make for great filming. So if you want to use a backdrop, uh, I've got two different kinds and I'll do this relatively quickly with the large Vanguard bags because I just like everything to match, be the same. I've got these commando cloths which is black, uh, heavy duty commando cloth which is very sound deadening as well so it knocks down the echoes or improves the sound quality. These are 12 feet by 10 feet um, so they're quite large. And then also, black's great backdrop, but depending on what you want to do with it, it's just that one color. Um, so here, in addition, I've got a white backdrop, and I also have green screen. And the green screen is kind of fun. Both of these are 10 feet by 12 feet, and I put them on a backdrop uh, holder, and then I can record in front of the green screen and change whatever the background is. So on a recent project, I found I bought a green screen suit, which is the entire body suit, covers your head, your face, everything, so that you can record and you can be standing there holding something and spinning it around and then you get into post-production and poof, you can get rid of yourself because of the green screen. And in case it's not quite so, so much needed, you just need to hold something, I have green screen gloves as well that come up to about the shoulder. So it can just block out the hands. Really neat, fun to do with the green screen, just learning that one. I've got a 10-inch a rotisserie table, um, a rotating swivel turntable. I've got a 12-inch and my electronic 10-inch as well, which I need to add to this kit. Um, and that's nice. You can put product on it and have it turn while you're, photogra while you're f f photographing it or videoing it. And then at 12 of these clamps, you can never have enough. So these are my backdrops. Um, that's all I've been needing so far, so that works, that works out fine. So we've, so far we've seen the camera gear, uh, we've seen a lot of the, the microphone and sound gear, but now we need to look at some of the lighting gear as well. So I'm gonna start off with my travel lights and tripods. It's just kind of a handy one. I use this with the travel gear bag, the travel camera bag, so I have just a handful of stuff that I can use at a moment's notice. Uh, as always, with some power cords. These are 15-foot extension cords with multi-plugs on the end, so really convenient to have on hand. And then something else handy is just the little one-footers with three plugs, so you can get more out of it. So I've got three sets of lights that I carry, and these are pretty neat. They're similar to the ones I showed you in the, in the travel camera case. Uh, they're the Veltrox RB10 lights. So batteries, uh, hot shoe adapters, Viltrox uh, RB10 power adapters, battery chargers, and then the two lights that go with each one. And these are different because with the RB10, you can adjust not only the, the uh, light intensity by the Kelvin 3500 up to 8500, but you can do any of the RGB color band on there as well. Plus you can also, so it's multicolored, and you can also do the power from 20% um, all the way up to, to uh, 100%. So we've got that light kit. We've got another two here. And another two here. One unique thing about these lights that I really like, <coughs> excuse me, is that they have clips on the side so that if you need to, uh, you can just clip them together and you can put a whole string of them together. Pretty handy. Roll of gaffer's tape. It's like duct tape. It's as strong as duct tape, but the adhesive is different. So it doesn't, st it sticks well, but it doesn't leave any of that adhesive stuff on it. Once we get into the drone talking. This is the, the uh, Loom Cube Mavic 2 light adapter and then the, the two uh, Loom Cube lights. These are crazy bright so they work well at night to be able to illuminate. You can, it's like putting two super bright headlights on your drone. 
And then in here, I carry two of the KNF Concept uh, light stands, which light, sound, whatever you want to use them for, not so much for cameras. They fit perfectly inside these bags. So good light stand. Base comes out, you know, adjustable like that, and then they actually adjust upward with just one pull. So good lightweight travel stand. Um, you can go any direction you want with it for how far you want the leg spread. So it doesn't take up a lot of footprint. So we actually we have two of those that we take. So we've got at least two lights. And then also for camera, well, <laughs> I carry a Sea Life uh, Aquapod selfie stick for a GoPro underwater. You never know. And then this is a Geek Auto tripod. It's a travel tripod. So it's super light. It's the X25 Defender. Now one of these legs will come off and act as a monopod. Um, it's got a great head on it. So it's, it's got a pretty pretty good fluid head, adjust multiple directions. Uh, this thing will extend, and probably the biggest feature of it is that it, it will extend out and sideways as well. So, you know, you can pull it out and it'll come out sideways, or you can reverse it and it'll go down, upside down. So if you want to have a tripod that hangs your camera uh, upside down, and these legs all extend out. So it's got a lot of versatility, a lot of good space. So that is my travel gear that I can take with me and always have sets of tripods, more than enough lighting, and some extension cords. Okay, so that was the travel lights. Next thing I want to show you is going to be the uh, DASNY lights. I just started using these and I love them. So in this kit I have four. You have to get, I think it was the the batteries and chargers and things I had to order separately. Um, but these are a fantastic light. So it's the DASNY D50. You can see it's really big. Um, so here I got all the, the power cords. It comes with uh, table mounts. So these, these are all the table mounts that go together with all on this side. You've got all of these. So they screw together and they can mount on the table like that. Mount your light up above. Lots of them. Um, <clears throat> so I've got four of these in here. And again, since it's insurance, one, two, three, four. You can see all four of them right there. And I'm not sure which bag of lights I charged up, which set of batteries. But I'm going to show you this thing. Here's zero, and it's set at 5,400 Kelvin right now. And I'm going to take it up. So, so you can see that's 100%. So that's really a bright light. That's great. It's good. It's a soft light. You can shine it on yourself. And it's also got uh, <clears throat> good Kelvin adjustment. So if you leave it on. So it goes up to 8,000, which is a very white light. And you can drop it all the way down to 3,000 Kelvin, which is a very warm light. So they're, they're great lights. You've got four of them to be able to use. Uh, and that's what this whole kit is. So the next set of lights I'm going to show you are uh, by Photodiox. They're called Pop Spot 50s. It's a big gear bag. So I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see, but these are actually Fresnel lights, uh, LED Fresnel lights. So what that means is that you can focus them like a spotlight. You know, a spotlight's out broad or narrow or back. So you can do that with these. A big pad. So in this kit, <laughs> it's a ton of stuff. It comes with three of the Pop Spot 50 Fresno lights, and it's as easy as adjusting it right up here for how that comes in and out. 
Now they also have barn doors for them. So you can adjust your lighting based on the barn door usage. So if you want to close it in and like really focus a little beam. So pretty slick with the barn door adjustment. I usually don't use those. And like I do with everything, as I mentioned, um, I have the power, which it comes with the power cords here, the plug adapters, so that's all the power units that they actually have a mount. It's pretty slick, nice mount, so the power mount goes on the side, the light goes on the top. <coughs> and then also, uh, you have the Sony uh, F750s, two of them on each side. So again, you can use it either all battery or all power. Um, and battery chargers, so you got three of those as well. So that's where these three lights, fantastic, um, very bright. And I'll show you, I've got the, the uh, light domes that are probably 36 inches, big softbox light domes form as well. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So that was the light kit. Next thing we're going to look at is our teleprompter. So we have an ICANN telecopter, big heavy sturdy case. And you'll see as, we, as I do other things with this that it's really great to be able to put, put it on, the, on this tripod and have your camera inside it so that you're actually keeping eye contact with the camera while you're reading. Um, there's some other things that I'll be using it for. for video conferencing so that I can actually project into, I'll be using an iPad as the, as the monitor for it. So into the iPad I'll be able to project like the Zoom meeting. So I'll be able to look at everybody in the uh, Zoom meeting maintaining eye contact when I'm looking at the camera but I'm still seeing all of them directly. So it's not going to be that looking slightly off to the camera and then back. At, so good way to maintain eye contact. So the teleprompter Big kit, comes with all everything possibly to go with it. Got the shade screen and then the big teleprompter glass itself. So we'll sit like this and for, with the camera being where I'm at, the iPad goes into this lower mount and then the screen angles and reflects and it has this big shield that goes around the whole backside and the camera to darken it. Uh, it's got a whole mount system that goes with it and I'll be uh, doing more stuff with that and you'll see me playing with it a bit in the future. But I think that's going to be a great system and ICAM makes a good product. Uh, they got a heck of a mounting system because it's real quality. CNC machined aluminum comes with a remote. Um, so that's the teleprompter. Next bit of gear I'm going to cover is my gimbals. So I'm going to get three gimbals and show you each one of them. So I have the Zhiyun, Zhiyun, the Weeble S, which this is a great gimbal. It actually has a lower handle, lower angle. Um, I can actually put my, my video camera on this, not just the uh, Canon M50s, and I can record. It's very smooth to transition up and down and it's designed to carry a heavier weight. So that great system. Um, I use a lot of quick releases, handle extensions for it, and uh, you'll see that when I actually get to use it. I also have the uh, Zune Crane gimbal, which works great for the Canon M50s. It's small, it's light, uh, very stable, and a lot of good modes. I got extra batteries for it, so that if, um, you know, that's not an issue. And again, I use quick release mounts for everything. So, got the Zhiyun Weeble S, the Zhiyun Crane Gimbal, and then also, let me get this one out of the way. I have this as well, which is a free vision. It's the Vilta M Pro, and this gimbal is a nice little unit that's it's actually designed for an iPhone. So I can put the iPhone on the gimbal and uh, record with that. Extremely stable. It's a great system. Um, I've had real good luck with it. So three, three gimbals. Again, Zhiyun Weeble S, heavier, 
uh, low slung better, lots more room to it. The Zune Crane um, works great for Canon M50 size cameras. And then the uh, Freevision Volta S, uh, Volta M Pro for the iPhone. So those are my three gimbals. So I showed you my gimbals for stability, they're great. Here's one of my favorite things to, to use, and there's FAA rules you need to understand and learn about. And this is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro uh, Zoom drone. So great drone. It's got a, a, a zoom head on it, articulates, you can control it really well. A lot of some of the accessories I have here, these straps to help keep it bundled up. Um, So just like that, great drone, and uh, enjoy that, flying it around. I got spare batteries, controller. I also have an iPad, aluminum iPad mount that goes with it, because instead of using my little iPhone controller, I like to mount my iPad on it so I can have a big view of where I'm flying and what I'm seeing. Uh, so with that, I also picked up a few, access few accessories with it like this uh, F-Stop Labs uh, Mavic 2 battery charger. So you can actually charge three batteries at once. And also has uh, USB ports for con charging your controller. And then I can use the standard uh, one charger that comes with it so I can charge all four batteries at a time uh, before I fly. So um, DJI Mavic 2 Pro Zoom, great drone, uh, flies like crazy, I've flown it out over the ocean and uh, go six, seven miles. It's fantastic. So I showed you my drone. Um, love filming with that. It's so much fun to fly and have fun with. But here's my run and gun case. And just a simple gun case I picked up and uh, it works great. I use it for carrying the Canon XA45 video camera. Uh, this is a what would you call a uh, prosumer, like a professional consumer level. So it's, it's a kind of a higher level. Uh, actually has a, a great system here so you can set up your microphone, SLR inputs, you can control all your volumes here. Um, got side view, you can see everything, but it um, had a good zoom on it, so uh, it'll, it'll zoom in quite a bit. But that's a, that's a great run and gun if you want to just grab it and go. Uh, fits well into my uh, Zhiyun Weeble S um, gimbal. So I like using that. And great system. Um, when I use it on the gimbal, I have this extension that I use because I got a VZ Rock Vera Zoom controller, which I can plug into the, to the camera. And then I'm not having to reach up onto the camera. I can still maintain positive control of the gimbal and do all of my controls here with one thumb. And if I ever need to set it down, got a tripod base with it. Now, the other thing I carry in my run and gun bag is an iPhone 11S uh, Pro, I think it's called. Um, but to get the, the videography and, and photos with this that I'd like, um, I got a Polar Pro case for it that is pretty slick because it has a super high quality filter system that you can that, that screws onto it. It doesn't screw on, it like kind of locks on. So here I keep an ND filter and, and the reason I keep this variable two to five ND filter uh, on it is that I'm able to, to really open up my aperture setting and let in a lot of light, but if it's too bright, instead of getting washed out, um, I can adjust the ND filter to, to back that off. So that's fantastic. I also have a, a Morphe battery pack, so I can take extra power with me. And then the Polar Pro Light uh, case, actually the 3.5 lens has a case, and it's got a CP filter, and then a handle that clips on as well, so it makes it very, very functional. And that's all I carry in here. So that's my running, my running gun kit. Last couple of kit bags that I have, which um, first I'm gonna go over my projector bag, which is pretty convenient. It's a, if you've ever wanted to have a projector where you could place something up on the wall, 
Uh, I've got a jam box by Jawbone, which is a, a Bluetooth speaker, so that plays great. But then I've also got this projector, which is the uh, AXA Technologies um, projector. It's, it's the is the mic the P three hundred micro projector, and it actually will project up onto a wall, anything. It's super bright. Uh, in here, I've got tons of cables for it and more cables and power cords and stuff in here. So it comes with a remote control. Fantastic little projector kit. You could take anywhere you want with you and have that. So that was the projector. Last bag we're going to do on this side of the room is going to be our spotter bags. And that's great if you're out in an area where you want to be able to, to spot and get a long distance view of different things. Uh, depending on what you want to see. So we have two things in here. Um, the first one is we have a uh, Simmons spotting scope and it's a uh, 20 by 60 by 60 millimeter spotting scope with its own tripod. So that's a great spotting scope. It's good to use and get good eyes onto anything you need. And then we also have a Celestron um, travel telescope, which again, uh, easy spotter, great viewfinder, uh, comes with its own tripod, and you can really see long distance and figure out where you want to be, what kind of shooting you want to do. So very handy to have. Okay, now that we've seen all the primary gear, we're going to take a look at some of the supporting gear. First one I'm going to do is tripods. So. For the price of a Manfrotto tripod, you really want to buy the Manfrotto padded bag to protect it. It's just, it's worth doing. They're crazy expensive and they're wonderful gear, Italian made equipment. So here I've got two, I'm not going to crack it all the way open, but you can see it's in there. <laughs> and this is the Manfrotto 055 tripod. And it's incredible tripod. And I put all of mine with the uh, Manfrotto MVH502AH uh, fluid head so that what happens is I can mount a camera on here and be able to move it. And because of the fluid head, the stability, it's extremely smooth. So um, great system. I also always use the Manfrotto quick release system. So that gets in there and just snaps snaps the cameras in place, you saw it, so I can click them in, click them off without wasting any time. So I've got two of the Manfrotto uh, camera tripods that are uh, extremely uh, stable, very solid, super quality manufactured. So those are the Manfrotto tripods, um, fantastic, can't speak highly enough about them. Let me show you the light tripods. And again, if you're using Manfrotto gear, spend the money, get the Manfrotto gear bags. Definitely worth it. So first thing I'm going to show you and these are for the Manfrotto light stands. So they clip together. They're really solid. It's pretty cool. Um, little release button up here. Just separates them. And again, it's all Manfrotto stuff, super high quality, uh, comes with a light or sound mount at the top. So this is a set of three. And I use those typically or primarily for the Pop Spot 50 Fresnel lights. And then over here, again, this is studio work stuff. That's why it's so big and heavy. I use this for sound, and if you remember, I have the uh, the two Rode NTG2 microphones with the boom attachments. So this is a KTEC Avalon uh, boom microphone boom. It's got built-in SLR cables. You can extend this out a good 10 feet to get it out over your subject and out of camera view. So two of those, and I have two of the, the exact same type uh, Manfrotto. These are the one. 1004 BAC light and sand tr sound tripods. So same thing, so I've got five of these total with the two microphone booms.
So I showed you, showed you the, the Manfrotto light and sound tripods. Now I'm going to show you some other boom arms. Now these are made by Newer. So I have two of them, and I keep them in Fovitec Studio Pro bags. And what's different about these than those is these have the boom arm built in. So you can put up the tripod, and then the boom arm comes up, and this extends out from there. Um, different is that this, you can move the counterweight anywhere you want. So you can be in close or, or counterbalance it. And I also have weights that I'll show you when I get to my weight bag that clamp onto here. They're four kilo weights to help counterbalance it. So great tripods if you ever need to produce something where you need to get either a microphone or a light way out there. Uh, it's another good set. So these are both counterbalanced. And these are made by Newer. So two of them. So we're really kind of blasting through the tripods and stand section because it's kind of just the, a lot of gear but the same type things. Uh, next thing I'm going to show you, they're also made by Newer and they're two of the same. They're the backdrop mounts uh, or back, backdrop stands for the, uh, the material that I showed you earlier that I have. So these are they come together and they're, they're adjustable width-wise and height-wise when assembled. So you have a maximum, uh, I believe, of 10 feet wide, uh, about 10 and a half feet wide, and about 8 feet tall. So when you put a, a 10 by 12 backdrop on it, it comes down and has 4 feet coming forward of the backdrop. So you can see it, this is a pretty nice little kit. So it's made so that you've got all of your, your poles and then I just use these padded bags for the, for the base legs so that they don't bounce around and beat everything to death. So I actually have two of these backdrop kits. I can go a maximum of about 20 feet wide with the backdrops, uh, 8 feet, 9 feet tall and cover quite a bit of distance. So great backdrop kits. Now for the pop spotlights that I showed you earlier, I said I had the, the great big domes. And these are really nice to have. One of these has what's called a, a, a beauty ring that goes into it. So it's a bright aluminum piece that's inside behind the diffuser. It helps add extra soft light. Uh, the other one has an uh, um, egg crate grid that goes over the front of it. And what that does is it actually focuses the light so you don't get a lot of side dispersion or light reflecting off the sides. So these are the diffusers that go in it. And this is designed just to go right on the, the Fresnel lights, Fresnel lights. And this is a pretty slick setup. So it actually works just like a, an umbrella, although. So you can see how big it is. You can see most of those are probably at photography studios. You've seen something like that. But then these white covers go over top of it. There's two. There's one inside, then one on the outside. And it really helps soften and diffuse that light. So there's this one, um, and over here I've got another one. It's same thing, except that it, both of them have a different attachments to them. So those are my light, light boxes. All right, those are the light boxes. Next thing I'm going to show you is going to be our, PS2, our PSA1 arms. And these are great, but you can see I've got this one bound up so it doesn't pop free under spring tension and when I show the I showed the sections of the uh, Daytona office and the Tampa office I have one of these mounted on each one of the desks but I have four of these <laughs> all together so that uh, again the whole idea is to be set up completely for a, four people to speak and talk at a so this one <laughs> hasn't even come out of the box yet and I don't think I'm going to take it out just for this. So anyway, we have four of the uh, Rode PSA1 
podcaster studio arms. Really happy with the quality and the, the function of them. So highly recommend them. So those were the, the Rode microphone arms. I'm going to show you a few other things I use. These are the Manfrotto 244 and 244 RC arms, and they're actually a desk mount. So you loosen this one knob, you can clamp it onto a desk, and you can swivel it any way you want with a camera on top. Tighten that down, and the whole thing locks in place. So really convenient when you're podcasting or, or a Zoom meeting and you want to use a DSLR or a uh, mirrorless camera. Put it on the desk, so it's right there. You can adjust it twist of the wheel. So we have two of those that we use and again it's, uh, for podcasting we can use more cameras. And I also have this little Topman uh, TJ13 all, all metal uh, tripod. It's great. It's kind of vintage uh, but it adjusts really well and I use that for, usually for a light <laughs> when I'm working at my desk at night we're having calls with uh, Taiwan and I need some extra light on me I'll just throw that up behind the computer screen and be able to grab that. So that works really well. And then the one other thing is I've got the, uh, the RAM mount here for the, for the iPad mini. And that's a good suction base mount that you can mount anywhere and then you can adjust it so you can have your iPad mount as well. So that's great for podcasting or being able to mount it so that you can see the screen of, of what you're presenting and be able to talk it at the same time. So another great system. So those are my little uh, tripod or table mount arms, things like that. Uh, I'll show you a couple other things here. Is you want to have a good weight bag because weights are heavy and they will tear through most of your bags. So this one's from XS Scuba, and it's it's a great gear bag for carrying weights. That's what it's designed for. So these are the four kilogram weights that go on the end of those boom arms to help counterbalance it. Uh, great adjustment, heavy. So I carry two of those in here, and then I also carry two four kilo ankle weights. And these are great because when you're extending your camera out, you can put these on your camera legs and they'll keep it from tipping over, which I've done and smashed a 16 millimeter lens hood. So these come in extremely handy. So that was the weight bag. Uh, something I probably should have covered during lighting is good reflectors. Good reflectors come in handy. These are made by Newer, and it's a it's actually a five in one, so it's a pretty good system. So it folds up. So you got a black reflector, you've got a silver, which you can see how much I can reflect, and it's just like adding light. Um, but the unique part about this one is that it's got a zipper here, and you can see I've also got a gold reflector inside, and that gold will add a much warmer tone. I've got a white reflector, which kind of adds a bit of a softening but diffusing. And then this center one that comes out, and it's just a complete white diffusing. You see my hand through it? So that's a good light diffuser. So a uh, good newer reflector, um, multicolored. It works good indoors and out. You find it invaluable. Sometimes you just want to bounce a little light off the back wall or the room for a fill light, and that works really well. So we're kind of winding down, but I've got a last couple things I want to show you. No. Second to the last is going to be a little table, and this is a this is really handy to have. But it's it's just a portable table uh, stand that you can see it's pretty big. It's on a tripod base, so you can go anywhere. You can set this up, float, rotate it, and you've pretty much got a computer stand or a table anywhere you need it. So very lightweight, very handy to have. Uh, I use it for my laptop when I'm doing. Uh, digital recording and, and managing that. So um, this one is made by Pile, and uh, they're fairly inexpensive. So I'm glad I got one. All right, my last two bags are what my wife calls jibble jabble bags. So they're just the the little bags that come with cameras, and you can fill them up with stuff. So I actually I have two purposes. I've got this one which I keep spare cables. I keep a lot of my boxes that uh, have spare parts. You know, I've got uh, DJI drone spare parts. I've got the spare gimbal protector, um, Canon, things like that. Uh, spare lens filters, a little mini tripod, and then lots of GoPro 
uh, housing backings, so I can change the different type backing, and just little things like that. So camera adapters, little handy tripods, but just you need a place for carrying for storing all of that stuff. So when your when camera comes in one of these gear bags, don't get rid of it. Just keep it to use that. And then over here, another little gear bag. This one, I have a little uh, Ritz Gear shotgun microphone, so it's great. You can hook it onto a camera hot shoe. Um, homemade for that, but that's a, a, a GoPro mount. You know, I got a GoPro head harness, GoPro chest harness, uh, lots of different GoPro mounts. In here, I also have a GoPro Hero with a dive housing on it, so that's Good for scuba diving, you know, more cleaning equipment, and a place to keep the books. You want to keep your your uh, different books for you know that came with gear. Um, I also have a GoPro dash mount, and like you'll never get tired of seeing is more cables. This being HDMI to HDMI, and you can never get enough of these. Your Manfrotto quick release mounts, you'll use those on just about everything if you go that route. And then that wraps it up. As I showed you, I've filmed this whole thing on an iPhone 10, just so that I could capture all of it without having to use any of the gear. The only thing I did use was the, uh, the lavalier microphone setup and the Rode uh, Wireless Go sound system. So that's all my equipment, and uh, I'll get the valuations and stuff to the, uh, in my list for my insurance company. Um, I also have the Tampa desk and the uh, Daytona desk that you saw as well. Here's a quick view of my desktop recording and uh, workstations. So I do uh, video conference calls from here and also for post-production, have my software on here as well. So I've got the Apple iMac computer, which I use for most, uh, most everything. And then here I've got the Rode PSA-1 with the uh, Shure SM7B microphone, again it's great, it just articulates everywhere. But to get that to flow into the computer, I flow it through a, a Cloud Cloud Lifter um, CL1, which is a, a, a mic actuator. And from the Cloud Lifter, it gets fed into the Scarlett 2i2 uh, sound processor. And from there, it's made by Focusrite, by the way, and by there, it flows into the computer. So that's my uh, personal desk setup. And I, this one is in Daytona and the same thing in Tampa. So here's my Tampa office and you can see it's pretty much the same thing. I've got the Rocket Kicker 5.5 uh, monitor speakers on clutch stands, which have a great uh, resonance, sound really well. A little, little light from my desk. And then I've got another uh, iMac, 27 inch over here. And I run the same uh, Cloud Lifter and Focus Scarlett 2i2. SMB7 microphone and Rodecaster Boom. So pretty much the same equipment. I like it to match and be identical from one location to the other. And instead of carrying it back and forth, we just keep it all in one place. And aside from the two iMac desktops that we we have, also have the uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch. With uh, this is where we mount the Samsung external hard drive, one terabyte hard drive, and all of the softwares that we use to, to work with. So today is going to be my first shot of using my vlogging desk. I wanted to get set up, so kind of cool. You can see I've got uh, the two DASNY lights, and they are here on a remote control, so uh, it's easy just to raise and lower them if you want. If I want, I uh, got Roadcaster arm with a Shure SM7B microphone. I've got the two uh, Canon M50 cameras. I've got a monitor set up here. I actually I want to get a monitor on each one of the sitting on top of the cameras, but I forgot to get an HDMI cable to to, <laughs> to jump them together. And then I've got the uh, A10 Mini Pro uh, video switching unit here the Rodecaster Pro audio switching unit, and then my Mac. So, kind of cool here, I'll try and get a little bit of this view. 
So you can actually see, so if I'm looking at camera two right now and then I want to switch over to camera one and jump to that, I can talk and have all kinds of fun with it and go back and forth and then I can use uh, different camera angles or beside different camera angles, but I can also plug in my computer to show through the system as well. So still figuring it out. Today's day one, uh, but should be a fun pass.